Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 16 tháng 8, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, việc thâu thập dữ kiện về các nhân viên Việt Nam soi sáng một phần cách làm việc của các cơ quan Hoa Kỳ. Khác với những suy nghĩ thường tình rằng tất cả những hoạt động của CIA đều phát xuất từ cơ quan hành pháp hoặc là lập pháp của Hoa Kỳ. Nhưng hoạt động như việc thu thập dữ kiện về những tin đồn về cách hoạt động đáng trách của các cơ quan dân sự, quân sự Việt Nam nhằm cải thiện nguồn máy hành chính và dân sự phát xuất là do sáng kiến của những nhân viên Mỹ hoạt động ở Việt Nam. Một suy nghĩ sai lầm khác là các hoạt động của CIA hoàn toàn mờ ám và thường phát xuất cho những mưu đồ thâm hiểm. Trong cuộc phỏng vấn kỳ này, mời quý vị nghe một câu chuyện về công trình thu thập tin tức tuy do người Mỹ khởi xướng đã bùng phát vì có sự ủng hộ mạnh mẽ của các nhân viên Việt Nam. Cũng như các nhân viên Mỹ, các nhân viên Việt Nam hy vọng hoạt động thăm dò lấy tin tức của họ sẽ đưa đến một kết quả cho nguồn máy hành chánh dân sự, quân sự nói riêng và nguồn máy quốc gia nói chung. Một hoạt động tuy có vẻ thầm lén, nhưng chẳng có gì đáng xem là những tin tức bí mật, cần giấu giếm. Minh Thúy mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi hồ sơ nhân sự Việt Nam qua lời kể của ông Frank Scotton trong phần 12 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Did you, ever, serious, did you ever talk seriously with Kobe uh, before this project start? Like, who would be behind these things at first? So why was it all of a sudden an issue that wasn't an issue before and it has to be... I, I think because the reports, the reports started coming, the, the, the Cords organization, when it, was, when it was saddled upon MACV, was the first time you had a countrywide um, collection of data on the part of uh, personnel that were, uh, for the most part, either civilian or heavily influenced by the, by the Comer, Colby, thinking about the need to uh, improve the quality of life in the countryside, and even in parts of the parts of cities. And, and do you think this, this decision is at the uh, advisor level, the people in Vietnam, or is it some, something like congressional asking for no, accountability no, for a project? Anything, no, I no. don't think it had anything no, no, to okay. do with congressional because had it been that, then I think at some point a visiting uh, congressional representative would have asked for access or, or wanted to look at things. And, and to my knowledge, it never happened. Mm. Now, I, I have to say also that uh, uh, for me personally, this was a, a minor uh, uh, duty, minor duty, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that uh, Colby had asked me to take on, uh, you know, I, I had so many other things, and as he said during our initial uh, discussion about whether I would work for him or not, uh, he, didn't, he didn't expect to see me in the office every day, you know, that I would be out and about and uh, in other parts of the country and coming back. Um, I tried, his secretary was named Tina Capazinas, and I, I tried to, if I was going to be an i corps I would tell her I would be an i corps so she could reach me. So uh, were, were there a lot of Vietnamese playing supportive role in the uh, co collecting effort, information uh, about the were, corruption? There were some because there was a, uh, there was a, uh, an element in MACV called Pacification Studies Group which had some significant Vietnamese em employees, Do Minh Nhat being one of them, mm -hmm. Tran Hu Chi, who survived and lives in, uh, in uh, uh, the Atlanta, Georgia area, not in Atlanta. Um, and many of those people were people who had begun with, with me during the period when I was with Special Forces. And I, and I had a, uh, ultimately about 60 or 70 Vietnamese cadre who undertook special missions around the country, mm -hmm. some of them involving training, some of them other things. And in, uh, uh, and we, we had them all, for a time they were, some of them were on 
a CIA payroll, some were on a USIA payroll, some were on a Special Forces payroll. But in January of 66, we had merged them all onto a Special Forces payroll. And, uh, and then in my absence, a, a good fellow named Gordon Huddleston, whose family is coming to visit me next, uh, he's dead now, but his family is coming to see me next week. Uh, Gordon Huddleston kind of took over the overall responsibility for this assortment of uh, 70 or 80 people. Uh, but then uh, uh, the, the newly arrived commander of Special Forces decided that uh, he was not going to do those kind of special tasks anymore. He was going to do other things. So it, just at that point, I, I came back to do some work with, uh, with Bob Comer before Colby. And Huddleston saw me and said, what are we going to do? So, so I said, OK, uh, we'll, we'll take some of them and put them with John Pan in three corps, because Mann wants to have his own little intel mm -hmm. net. Uh, we'll put some of them in the Vung Tau Training Center with Win Be. Mm -hmm. And some of them, right now, we'll put into uh, what became Cords, because Comer uh, is a little bit dependent on me for advice on how to organize and set up things. Mm -hmm. So we'll put a, we'll call it an evaluations group, that they evaluate the the conduct of operations oh. at the district level and below. And That's the work, main one. That's the main yeah, one. And they yeah. work with experienced Americans like John Libran from Special Forces, uh, 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 Jerry Dodson, uh, who'd, who'd been with me before. They work with experienced people and they submit special reports. They don't do routine reporting, they do special reporting. Okay, so then when I came back and I was working with Colby uh, about two years later, I find out that it, it still exists. And that is uh, generating a lot of significant reporting. Okay, so that's your main apparatus? Well, that's one to... of them, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. So you, uh, people like Chen Hu Chi and uh, Do Ming Yat is actually the person behind all these files, uh, making up the database. Many kind of. of them, yeah. But w once they showed they had an interest in it, then other people became interested too, <laughs> see? So that the, uh, the, the range of uh, those sources from which reports arrived uh, increased. But it, it began specifically with that group that I, that I put into. Uh, so what's the purpose behind collecting all these other than the accountability for the uh, well, effort, the uh, pacification Well, initially what I told Comer is I said, it's, it's better to know than not to know. You know, because he asked the same question. He said, what are we going to do with that? I said, well, in the first place, they'll be doing other things as well. They're not just going to be looking at that. But it's better to know than not to know. Secondly, um, it, it gives you data with, with which you can use when you're, when you're asking for a replacement. You know, I, I, well, you just get basically the map of the competence of the South Vietnam, if you have that, because you look at that, at least the transparency of what they're doing and for what purpose. It, it, and it had, uh, the, it's the, very important. As I look yeah. at it right now, it's probably the main thing you should look at. It's, it's like the map of the, uh, well, a lot the capability of, it, of people. Well, was, was very important. And, and the other thing is, it did not have just to do with, with uh, uh, issues like uh, corruption or quality of performance, but uh, one of the things I was interested in when I, when I did it, when I kind of kick-started something like that in the beginning um, with uh, Comer, pre-Colby, uh, was that I, I, wanted to, I wanted us to be aware of the difference between uh, organizational reporting that would come up from uh, the dis district mm -hmm. advisors Americans and province advisors versus real-time situational reporting. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, my example at that time was uh, having taken a team with John Librand and, and uh, Jerry Dodson 
it was the Long Hu area, again in Long'an province, uh, where the, the province senior advisor uh, and the province team had reported tremendous success in, in swinging this area from uh, liberation front control to government control. So we three go in there with uh, three of uh, the, the new evaluators, former, formerly with me in Special Forces, and we find out that uh, the, the, it wasn't like that there's at still all. communist presence on Lomho Island, that the government presence is restricted to a little area on the northern side of the island, that the, the regional forces company doesn't go anywhere outside of their little fortress area, that there are uh, not many, but there are a few communist cadre out there in the hamlets, that the, the roads are still trenched so that government vehicles cannot get down to the other side of the thing. Yeah. What's the usage out of that? Once when you, in the beginning, you probably have a fuzzy idea of what's going to be using you. That's the first question that- Well, I, I, I thought it, the, 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 I thought that Colmer could use it to insist on enhanced performance. That's the, that's the minimum. Yeah, that was the, and I, but, you know, I was always looking at minimums because in the best of circumstances, usually minimums were all you could accomplish mm -hmm. in the field, sorry to say. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 13 phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu ngày 30 tháng 8, 2024. Kính thưa quý vị, chương trình VATV đến đây xin tạm ngưng. Chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục phần 2 sau phần thông báo và quảng cáo.